As published by a leading professor of economics at Harvard University, central banks should prepare for when the next recession strikes. Not only is he boldly recommending negative interest rates to ease the next recession, but he's also recommending central authorities remove large paper bills from circulation, such as the $100 Benjamin, forcing citizens to keep cash in an electronic format. So are the banks really worried that people are going to start to withdraw all their money from the tellers? Do the economists really think that people are going to stuff all their dollars, metaphorically or literally, under their mattresses? And as we get closer to the overexpected economic downturn, should we expect the U.S. $100 note to become illegal tender? Let's discuss. Hey everybody, I'm Gary Palmer Jr., you're you, and together, welcome to Minting Coins. So there is uh, a, a lot going on, as, as you know. This is our second video for today. I'm looking to break up what we're talking about into a couple of different videos to help uh, you know detail out the topics of what it is that we're going for and make everything a little more bite-sized, but still placing all these videos together in a single playlist for the people who like to uh, watch everything together. So I know personally I can't get enough information and I'm just pretty much getting most of my work done uh, with YouTube in the background on 2x speed consuming as much as I can and I know that once people really get involved in the space then a lot of other people are really seeking to you know consume as much information as they can get in their lives as well. And so uh, nine times out of 10, perhaps more, what this information is really focused around and centered around is of course, Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, blockchain technology. But the fact of the matter is that everything is so much bigger. It's, it's really just a, a small piece of a much larger discussion, a much larger story. And so for Bitcoin and blockchain technology, it really fits in with the financial industry and the technology industry and traditional uh, politics and finance and economic policy. And what we have going on in this video is just reviewing what leading economic professors, leading economists uh, teaching at Ivy League pre prestigious schools, uh, people who are not only teaching the next generation of business leaders in our world who are working at major corporations, governments, financial institutions, but someone who's respected in the community and the financial industry and really has the ear of a lot of people uh, in, in that world. And so with this video, I really wanted to go into what this person is saying because as we saw in a previous video a few months ago, we were looking at a story that came out of the Washington Post in uh, February 2016 when we had a Federal Reserve governor uh, write an article w uh, making a case why we should eliminate the $500 euro note and the $100, uh, a $100 Benjamin Franklin bill in the United States. Uh, this is also after we saw just in November 2016 the country of India made illegal the $500 and $1,000 rupee note. Uh, and so those notes are no longer acceptable for people living in India. So there's a huge population in India. There's a huge population of people who are not a part of the banking system. And uh, a huge, and that population you know, deals with cash. A lot of people deal with cash. And so um, that's just no longer an option for them and they need to find ways to adjust. And what we see in several other articles and several other quotes and where we see the direction of the traditional financial industry going and where we see the direction of the governments is for um, digital cash, creating digital cash systems. And, uh, and so some people are really skeptical over Bitcoin because some people say Bitcoin is a honeypot or Bitcoin is created by the government or the, the powers that be or whatnot. But I think that if that was true, then it would be a lot easier to invade people's privacy and to 
uh, take control of the system. And, so, and just Bitcoin isn't set up that way. And so it really seems to be more of an independent, decentralized, uh, you know, form of digital trust than you would expect if, uh, you know, say a government or a central bank created that technology. The same as the Internet. If uh, a central bank or a corporation created the Internet, then we would just have this giant intranet and not an actual open public, um, you know, uh, means of communication, right? Distributed peer to peer communication. Um, so with that being said, yeah, I, I, th I think I gave a, a pretty good overview of talking about the, you know, the, the possibility of the recession, um, these, this information coming from uh, a Harvard professor, uh, this information really coming from a chain of other information that's been talking about the removal of large notes and, and bills in America or in other uh, parts of the world. And, uh, and then what this is also including on top of it is looking at the option of negative interest rates, essentially getting paid by the banks to borrow money. I mean, could you uh, like even imagine such a thing? It's like they're going to pay you to, to you know, buy, it says it's not going to cost you any money. It's not, it's not going to cost you 1%. It's not going to be free at 0%. It's, it's going to be less than free. And uh, the possibility of paying people 1%, give or take, um, you know, it is where this is going. And so with that being said, why don't we take a quick peek at the market just to get that benchmark for this video for uh, future recollection and, uh, and then look into the news and let's discuss. Okay, so real quick, popping over at coinmarketcap.com, just to touch upon the price in each of these videos, the market cap over $141 billion incredibly uh, large number all-time high for the total space 24 hour, hour volume uh, 5.4 billion dollars larger than average I would say Bitcoin dominance swelling back up over that 50% mark 51.8% uh, that gives us the Bitcoin price at $4,400 $4,423 a coin and a total market cap of $73 billion. As we were just talking about in the last video, this is now surpassing, not just eclipsing, and surpassing the market cap of PayPal. Uh, another $70 billion, and we'll pass the market cap of MasterCard. And, uh, and then uh, where is that? And looking in the, the Bitcoin price, um, one Bitcoin is still one Bitcoin, and we just see that most things are down. So if you're comparing against Bitcoin, IOTA is up, but uh, Bitcoin, I think, has really been the big winner over the past couple of days. So with that, why don't we turn into the news and turn to the Telegraph. And so this is the um, telegraph.co.uk, and uh, headline here is, uh, prepare for negative interest rates in the next recession, says top economist. And so what we have here is uh, this leading economist, Kenneth Rogoff. And so what this, what this person is saying is that central banks should do more to prepare and to do the groundwork to prepare for the policies of negative interest rates. And so the central banks around the world have turned to money creation and the credit crunch to stimulate the economy when interest rates were already at rock bottom. And so in this new paper, uh, let's see here, published in the Journal of Economic Perspectives, the professor of economics at Harvard University is, is arguing that central banks should start preparing for any way that they can for the different ways, for, the, for uh, whatever groundwork they, they need to lay out now so they can figure out how to cut the rates below zero. Uh, and they should do this so they're not caught off guard when the next recession strikes. And so it's not a matter of if, but it's a matter of when the next recession is going to strike. And uh, it's just his point of view is that we're going to need to make the interest rates negative because um, it's going to be required to stimulate the economy because things are going to be so bad that they're going to have to pay people to, to take to take money, uh, to pay people to spend money, uh, pay people just to keep the money flowing around the economy because there's going to be such a withdrawal 
from when this recession strikes. And so now we have a um, <clears throat> cool little you know graphic that shows the different central banks set interest rates over over time. And you can see some of them right now around the world are already below zero. And so traditionally cutting rates into negative territory would risk pushing savers to take their money out of the banks and stuff cash, either metaphorically or possibly literally, uh, under the mattress, so to speak, right? We've all heard those stories from the, the Great Depression. And so what this, uh, what this economist is saying is that as electronic transfers are becoming the standard way of paying for purchases, uh, uh, Mr. Ragoff believes that this is a diminishing risk. So the, uh, so the more that people are using the electronic payments, the less likely it is that people are going to pull all their money out of the bank um, because they're not going to worry about losing their cash because digital payments are such a way of their life. Um, and then, and then uh, the, he goes on to say that it makes no sense to wait until the next financial crisis to develop these plans. Um, that the growth of the electronic payment system and the increasing uh, marginalization of cash, um, the, the, the increasing you know, disuse of cash and um, you know, uh, looked down upon usage as people, they're, they're saying people just have a, a, a much greater preference to use Visa or MasterCard or the digital economy as opposed to carrying cash around. Uh, that a much smoother path to a negative interest rate policy can can exist now than could have ever before. Apparently, if they would create this negative interest rate policy and we didn't have this massive digital payment world, then apparently they uh, see that, that that would cause uh, people to do a run on the banks and for people to go to the banks and just withdraw all their money. We saw that banks in Europe are really worried about this. We know banks in America are very, very worried about this. Um, and we, we've seen that even the, the amount of insurance in the federally insured insurance deposit is not enough to cover everyone's bank account in the event of some sort of major collapse or major problem. There's not even the insurance there to cover the basic $100,000 or $250,000 that everyone is supposed to be guaranteed uh, at that minimum level. So um, there's lots of concerns why there could possibly, possibly be a run on the bank. And uh, they're just saying that they can eliminate that risk and reduce that risk, A, because uh, the electronic payment system is, is so strong, but also, this part in red, that countries can scrap larger denomination notes to reduce the likelihood of cash being held in substantial quantities. And so essentially, you know, making it, uh, making it illegal for people to have lots of hundred dollar bills and thousands of thousands of dollars and hundred dollar bills, making these bills, um, not usable anymore for, for commerce. You know, you could probably take those and still deposit them digitally into a bank, but you wouldn't be allowed to, use them to, to buy groceries or use them to transact with other business owners. It'd be illegal just like it's illegal to transact with gold when they, when they made that law. And so, uh, yeah, so if there was, so the logic here is that if there was a recession and if they did need to bring the banking system to allow for negative interest rates, then uh, that would create a risk of people wanting to go to like a, a run on the bank and uh, to take their money out of the bank. Why would they take their money out of the bank? Well, if there's a negative interest rate, then you're not gonna be making money, right? Even though the amount of money that you make for having your money in the bank account is less than, uh, than, you, get, than you lose from inflation. So inflation is taking about 2%. Your bank account's giving you, le you know, about a, a 20th of 1%. So inflation is much, much greater than how much your bank account's giving you. But if you're, how much money you're getting from your bank account goes from, you know, a half of a percent or a quarter of a percent to zero, and inflation is still killing you. Um, and not only is it killing you, but it's killing you worse because with the recession, just the prices are going up while the while the income you have is probably going down, it's going to create additional stress for you to pull your money out of the bank. So the banks have this incentive, this tactic that they could possibly execute, which would make these larger 
denominations illegal for people to transact and therefore keeping people's money in the bank because you, you wouldn't be allowed, you, it would be extremely difficult to carry around thousands of dollars in what, $20 bills or even $50 bills? Um, I mean, they could easily make the $50 bill just as illegal as the $100 bill. So then to have thousands of dollars to go buy a car uh, with a, you know a suitcase full of twenties, it's just I mean that's that's sort of ridiculous and potentially dangerous, and uh, and and even then a few thousand dollars when you have you know even a semi significant level inflation, it is not really a lot. I mean pe people's rents can be a few thousand dollars, um, you know, uh, a, f a few months of savings, right? Uh, you know, some some people need uh, six thousand dollars a month, so a few thousand dollars is just half of one month of their savings. Um, yeah, really, really interesting. So then this goes on to say that um, it's it's a, a potentially practical idea. I mean, can you believe that? A potentially practical idea because cash now tends to be used solely, uh, largely only for small transactions. Additionally, law enforcement officials may also back the idea to, to because it would cut down on money laundering and tax evasion. So law enforcement officials like the FBI or the uh, local police may like the idea of eliminating large bills and because it could eliminate you know uh, problems with uh, sex trades and drug uh, money and money laundering and tax evasion. So um, not only would this have the backing of the banks, but this could have the backing of, you know, law enforcement officials. And so you would imagine if the law enforcement and the banks like it, then the politicians will also like it. And, uh, you know, who's who's to say that this just won't easily pass through at uh, 11 o'clock at night one night? Uh, the key consequence from an economic point of view is that forcing savers to keep cash in electronic format would make it easier to levy a negative interest rate. Should uh, another major prolonged global recession come anytime soon, um, you know, it could otherwise be impossible to lower the interest rates. Um, negative interest rates, you know, may become an option. Uh, alternative mon monetary policy instruments also do exist. We're not going to really go into these, but one of them is called forward guidance. Another one is quantitative easing. And then, uh, you know, those offer some possibility of easing the situation in case or when the economy does go into a recession. But there's potential issues with those. Um, these policies have been deployed for years. And in the case of Japan, more than two decades. And at least so far, they have not convincingly shown the ability to decisively overcome the problems posed by zero bound uh, interest. So very, very interesting right here. Uh, then uh, back up here again, you get to see the, the graphs of, of where everybody is. So you see how Bank of Japan has been near zero for uh, a very long time. Um, versus where China's at, versus where the uh, Swiss National Bank is at, negative zero, versus where the US Fed is at. Um, yeah, things have been pretty rough since the end of 2008, I suppose, right? So I'll, I'll include these links too, in case you're really interested, you could read more about forward guidance, which um, you know they're, they're saying may not work anymore or may not work as well, considering how low interest rates already are. And uh, also, reading between the lines how bad the next recession may actually be. And then the quantitative easing, uh, just giving you this information as well, detailing uh, the, the quantitative uh, easing information, um, just going deeper into that and deeper into what that is all about. So with that being said, it, uh, yeah, it's, it's really, really interesting just to see what's going on. It's really, really interesting to see this news. You know, again, uh, we've been hearing about this since early 2016 consciously, and uh, there could well be, have been talks and just talks in the news before we were being super conscious and super awake to how the uh, traditional finance financial industry was uh, so deeply rooted into Bitcoin, blockchain technologies, cryptocurrencies, since we started getting into, you know, you know, I started paying attention to what was happening again uh, a lot more closely in 2016. 
And so in 2016, uh, early 2016, there were talks about eliminating the $500 euro note, the $1,000 euro note, the $100 bill in the United States. Um, there's been talks of uh, the potential economic recession and, and really just the talks of how bad it could be. Uh, um, and, you know, it, it doesn't look good. Statistically speaking, the market goes up, the market goes down. So we're, it seems that everyone is expecting this downturn. And uh, it really seems like from the traditional business leaders that they're really setting up uh, the expectations that there's going to be this downturn. And that's just one sort of mess. That's uh, one set of problems that we all need to think about and we all need to prepare for, but then also to think that when we read articles like this, that we recognize that there's this huge potential, very, very likely potential, that the $100 bill could go away, uh, that, that it could just no longer be there. And then to see how that removing of the $100 bill is connected with the, um, the, the dominance and, and the overarching uh, acceptance of digital cash, digital payment systems, that it really shows, you know, if you, if you go beyond reading what's there, if you go beyond reading between the lines, and you go just a little bit further to, you know, thinking about what those next steps could be, we go from uh, eliminating that $100 bill to full acceptance and uh, dependence and d digital cash systems, and then pivoting into a Fed note or a Fed coin, which would uh, then essentially eliminate the total need for any cash whatsoever. And uh, yeah, so I'm just bringing this information to share with you. I know it's a lot of conjecture. I know there's a lot of speculation here. Um, it's just really interesting to just think about these possibilities based solely on the information that we're receiving today and the information that we already know about. So with that being said, I'd like to know, what do you think? What do you think about the possibility that we really will see the elimination of the $100 bill? What do you think about the possibility that, um, that a recession is coming and that we could see negative interest rates? Um, <laughs> if we see negative interest rates, how many stories do you think we're going to hear about people borrowing money, getting paid to borrow money, and then taking that money and just putting it right into Bitcoin? Uh, we're probably going to see a bunch of stories like that. I'd love to know what you think. I'd also like it if you would, you know, hit that like button. I really appreciate it. It really helps this channel. Feel free to check us out on Steam it. Feel free to uh, upvote this. Uh, start a conversation in the comments below. I really want to know what you think. Check us out on Steam it too. Put some comments over there. And, uh, you know, if that's a really good comment, you're first in there. I'm sure someone will upvote that comment as well. I'm really excited about the Steemit community and uh, shifting over to the Steemit community. You know, when you share those links on Facebook, share share those when you when you instead of posting on Facebook, post on Steemit and then put a link from Facebook over to Steemit. Oh yeah, I wanted to tell you guys, um, I was clicking on some Steemit links from Facebook, and Facebook was warning me that this looks like a malicious site, right? I bet they're warning people. They don't want Facebook does not want people going to Steam it because Facebook knows that there's going to be this mass migration once more people recognize what Steam it is and how Steam it is different from the status quo. The status quo being Facebook. Uh, you know, Facebook. It's only a matter of time, I think, before Facebook just eliminates those links or just completely downgrades those links that they haven't already. Just like Facebook downgrades YouTube links. So be on the lookout for that. Um, I'm sure we'll have more on that coming up in you know the days and weeks ahead as well. So uh, anyway, thanks for showing up. Tap that tap that like button. Uh, comment below. Want to know what you think about uh, you know the possible elimination of the hundred dollar bill and the negative interest rate uh, information uh, with the with the potential recession that's going to be coming this way. And uh, we'll we'll talk more in the comments below. I'm glad in the meantime we're minting coins.